a tropical wave is currently moving over the Caribbean Sea and as well as the Greater Antilles. And as it makes its approach closer to Florida as we go into this weekend, this particular tropical wave could go absolutely crazy. We could be talking about a significant system. We also could be talking about a relatively weak tropical storm that just brings some rainfall to areas like Florida and maybe up and down the East Coast. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about this tropical wave, why you should be preparing now in case something does happen and what the biggest impacts will be if a tropical storm or hurricane does develop. So we're going to begin with what we're talking about with this particular tropical wave, which right now this tropical wave is centered over the greater Antilles and it's very disorganized right now. It's not really in a primed environment for any sort of development over the next 24 to 48 hours. And in fact, the National Hurricane Center currently has this at a medium chance of developing over the next seven days, but it is not expected to develop really within the next 24 to 48 hours as it's continuing to move close to land and it's also moving through a lot of dry air in a pretty high shear environment. But as we go into this weekend, this is expected to make its way perhaps into the Gulf of Mexico or towards Florida. And really where it goes is crucial to what happens after Saturday and Sunday, because if it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, we could be dealing with a pretty significant storm. If it goes into Florida and kind of just meanders up the East Coast, that's kind of best case scenario right now where the impacts would be mostly just rain and there wouldn't really be anything super substantial in terms of like catastrophic flooding or something along those lines, which we'll talk more in detail about here in just a second. I also want to point out in the continental United States, we do have a few areas of thunderstorms that have been moving through this morning across parts of the Midwest. And we're going to talk later in this forecast about what you can expect in terms of severe weather here in the United States later today. Now, this is the latest National Hurricane Center outlook on this tropical wave. And notice the orange X that is currently where this disorganized area of of thunderstorm activity is located this morning. One thing I'm going to be talking about a lot over when we're looking at computer models is that this right now is not an organized low pressure system, meaning that computer models don't have a great grasp of what's really going to happen beyond today, which is why this is so crucial that we need to be watching this very closely because there are a wide variety of potential scenarios that happen here over the next few days with this disturbance. So we'll talk more about that here in just a minute, but I do want to point out that the area of development is back over in Cuba, back in the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. That is where this tropical disturbance could form, and that is where it could go towards. So that's the area that we're watching for the closest, really, for over the next few days. Notice this arrow, though. That basically means that we're not going to see development today, most likely, and we're probably not going to see a whole lot of development tomorrow. I think as we go into Saturday into Sunday, that is when the true development of this tropical disturbance would happen. Now, before we go more into the computer models and give you a general idea of what could be a scenario that happens, there's one key thing that I'm going to point out right off the bat that is going to really basically direct where this goes because one of the biggest concerns that we have right now with this potentially developing is that this could literally just stall in the Gulf of Mexico or near Florida for several days meaning that this could be a prolific flooding threat if that happens but some things that we're we'll have to watch for over the next few days are going to be in the jet stream which gives you an idea of what's going on in the upper levels we have a high pressure system back over in the western tier of the country which is important by the way for this. We also have a troughing feature back over here on the east coast of the United States. Now, depending on how strong the jet stream is, will be very crucial because if we do get some sort of tropical low that develops, the stronger this is and the longer it stays there, the higher likelihood that this low pressure system or tropical storm or whatever it is actually gets attracted to that jet stream and just goes, you know, basically racing off to the northeast. The problem, though, that the GFS model is currently showing for us is that this jet stream might actually not be very apparent and if the jet stream is way back up here to the north and we have a high pressure system right here this thing is going to be basically locked in gear back over in the northeastern gulf of mexico which means that we could have a tropical system sitting offshore or perhaps even onshore for several days and that could lead to some sort of very significant flooding threat so this is a big thing that we're going to have to watch for over the next 24 to 48 hours now again this is something that is basically worst case scenario and it's not a guarantee to happen i'm going to tell you right off the bat again we're not doing any sort of hype forecast here there's a lot of people that are putting a lot of hype into this crap it's stupid but i just want to let you know that this is something that could legitimately happen though it's not a high chance of happening it is something that if it does happen it would be a very big deal and we are within 150 hours of this being you know around the united states which makes it even more concerning because usually we have like a threshold like if it's within 150 hours out it is something that we need to take more seriously because it is a scenario that is possible so that's why i'm just kind of letting 
you know that this is a scenario that could happen. Now, I'm going to begin with the GFS model, which is a model that I personally am not a big fan of, but it is a model that has been pretty consistent for the last really 24 hours with its most recent runs. So as we go into Sunday into Monday, the GFS model basically shows a tropical storm intensifying just off the uh, coast of Tampa Bay, for example. Once we go into late Monday into Tuesday, just watch this like intensify into like a category one, two, maybe even three hurricane just to the south of the Florida panhandle. And then once we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, just look at this thing sit here. This is what would be concerning is if the jet stream does not pull this low pressure system, it could legitimately just sit in the Gulf of Mexico for days on end until something steers it some direction. And the GFS model by Thursday would finally move to like the Northwest, for example, and crash into Mississippi. Now, again, this is one scenario. And honestly, I'm not really sold on this scenario. So personally, my forecast is I don't think this is going to exactly happen like this, but it is something that is possible. It's just, again, not very likely. Now, if this were to happen, the GFS model is showing a basically catastrophic flooding threat anywhere in the Florida panhandle in a very localized area where we could see upwards of 40 to 50 inches of rain. Now, I do want to remind you, this is obviously a crazy scenario. And if this did happen, it would be literally insane. But I want to point out, we do not want to put all of our, you know, eggs into one basket. We want to look at other models because this isn't the only one that exists. Obviously, a lot of people, especially, you know, on social media, that's the only thing they're going to post. So make sure that you are verifying with other sources. It is just one model. Now, here are some of the other computer models that came in at the exact same time as the GFS model. And the European model is one of them. Notice as we go into Sunday, Monday into Tuesday, just off the coast of Florida, there's a lot of rain falling, but there's actually no definitive area of low pressure still, even as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday. And as we go into Thursday into Friday, the European model just has a sitting as well, just south of Florida. Now, in this scenario, if we have something that's at least a bit weaker, as in it's not a hurricane, but it's just a little, you know, maybe tropical wave still, or maybe it's even a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm, the impacts would be far less bad because look at the rainfall over the span of about a week. A lot of the rain would fall right up and down the west coast of Florida, but eight inches of rain over seven days, that's not really that bad. So if something like this happens, this would be a much better scenario. But even then, it's still going to probably bring some problems when it comes to flooding. Now, another model that we do sometimes look at is the Icon model. Um, honestly, the European model, by the way, is one of my favorites. That's one I use a lot for hurricane forecasting in advance. So I think I agree with that a little, a little bit more. I don't really buy the GFS model too much right now, but we are in a very you know active season where the you know the Gulf of Mexico waters are just so warm. So it would not shock me if something like that happened. It's just it's really you know out of left field sort of play if that happens. But this is the Icon model, which does show a tropical system forming. And as we go into Sunday, it actually crashes into Florida relatively quickly, and then the jet stream basically latches onto this and it races off to the north and east towards Nova Scotia as we go later into the week. That would be a little bit better of a scenario as well because we wouldn't be dealing with as much flooding as much you know as we could with like the GFS model for example. The last model I'm going to show you is the G it's the uh, Canadian model and the Canadian model is not one I use very often but it shows a similar scenario Monday making landfall is maybe like a, a low end hurricane or a high end tropical storm and then eventually it kind of moves to the east maybe causing some flooding across parts of the southeast as we go into the middle of the week and then eventually moves offshore by the weekend. So in conclusion what am I exactly telling you? Well what I'm telling you is that there are several scenarios that could pan out over the next few days. What we need to be waiting for is when we actually get a definitive area of low pressure or at least more signals from more models that are showing something more definitive because they're still really all over the place even with us being within 150 hours of this potentially making impact to areas like Florida. Now also I want to reiterate that there is a lot of hype around this especially with a GFS model run like this. There are a lot of posts on social media probably today that are going to be like oh my goodness you got to prepare now there's a big hurricane coming. It's possible right but it's something that is still not certain and there's still a lot of things that could change in between now and then. What you should be doing is at least being prepared make sure that you're ready to go if there's a flooding threat. If you're right along the immediate coast just make sure that you know your evacuation plan. By no means do you have to evacuate right now. Again we are still several days from this even making some sort of impacts. The earliest that this would really make major impacts if it were to would probably be like late Sunday into Monday. So something to watch for but again no reason to be panicking right now. Just stay tuned to the channel. We'll continue to provide you no hype forecasts on this particular tropical system. Now I do want to real quickly go over the severe weather potential for today and tomorrow. We do have a slight risk across the Ohio Valley in the Midwest. Main concern today will be damaging winds and there will be a low tornado risk. We might be live later today, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. It's relatively low. It's something that's more
more conditional, but we might see end up seeing like a couple tornadoes out there somewhere in Illinois, Indiana, maybe even over in Western Ohio. Once we go to Friday, the risk of severe weather continues to dwindle another marginal threat across the East Coast. No tornado is currently outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. It should be predominantly just a downburst damaging wind event. So here's the timing for today. Line of storms will be weakening this morning. By the afternoon, we'll see reinitiation across parts of Indiana and Kentucky, and as well as Ohio, where damaging winds and maybe an isolated tornado will be possible. Could see a couple of tornadoes back over in central northern Illinois. That's really the main area that I think will have a chance of tornadoes today. And then once we go into late Thursday night, most of this activity dwindles, and we're mostly just dealing with some showers out there as we go into the overnight hours into Friday morning. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.